once had a rather eccentric lecturer who started the term by asking us all to look into the eye of a potato. I'm still not entirely sure what he meant. But it turns out that looking closer at a potato is not such a bad idea because potatoes and other plants might just have the answer to our plastic problem. Intro sequence. What do we know so far? One, traditional plastics are made from oil and that's not good. Two, plastics are made from hydrocarbon monomers that are formed into long polymers. And these long chain polymers are what gives plastic its plasticness. So what if we could make long chain polymers from a natural, sustainable, plant-based resource? Well, turns out, nature beat us to it. Fats, DNA, starch, cellulose, these are all naturally occurring polymers. Let's look at starch. Starch is a carb. It's found in flour, maize, potatoes. When you boil pasta or potatoes and the pan is left with a kind of shiny skin on it, that's starch. And here's what a starch molecule looks like. At first glance, its molecular structure is scary and off-putting. But look again, we see the black carbon atoms bonded with other carbon atoms and the white hydrogen atoms. There's also some oxygen in there, the red ones. Essentially, it's just a load of glucose, that's sugar, monomers, all joined together to form one long polymer. Wait, this sounds familiar, right? Hydrocarbon monomers making up a long chain polymer? Exactly! As polymers are the building block of plastics, we can also make plastics from naturally occurring polymers, like starch. In fact, the first ever plastic was made from plants. The most well known is probably celluloid. Celluloid made from cellulose. Cellulose is a long chain molecule found in all plants. It's actually the most abundant natural compound on Earth, i.e. there's forest loads of it. After we made bio-based plastics, we invented oil-based plastics. And with this enormous reserve of cheap feedstock, we didn't look back until we realised we were having a catastrophic impact on the natural world. So now, some people are looking back at bio-based plastics. These days, you can make pens out of potatoes, coffee pots out of corn, cutlery out of cellulose. And more and more clever minds are looking for other sources of natural materials that can be used to make better and cheaper bioplastics. Remember right at the beginning when we looked at the life cycle assessment of plastics? Well, bio-based plastics really kick conventional plastics butt in the birth and death category. In birth, they don't require non-renewable and harmful resources to make them. And in death, bio-based plastics can be designed to be biodegradable. So when we're done with them, they're not sitting around for the next thousand years. Here's why. Bio-based plastics are, as the name suggests, made from plants. So nature has already got lots of microbes that are well adapted to digesting this plant material. And if we get into the chemistry, that carbon-carbon bonds are hard to break, which is why fossil fuels are full of them and conventional plastics don't break down. We also know that nature opts for the weaker carbon-nitrogen or carbon-oxygen bonds. Well, plant-based plastics are based on naturally occurring polymers. So they are mostly held together by these carbon-oxygen or carbon-nitrogen bonds. Look at this starch molecule. The red atoms are oxygen. Where these hold the chain together, they are weak spots. And you can see there's lots of them. And so the microbes start by breaking these weaker bonds and get to work digesting the broken up parts. Yippee! Final fact, oxygen and nitrogen bonds are less hydrophobic, resistant to water. So materials made from these polymers often have weaker barrier properties. <coughs> yes, that one. So they allow better access for the bacteria along with the water and the oxygen they need to get digesting. Don't ask me to explain the chemistry of that one in detail. Someone can enjoy themselves in the comments section. And so we can make plastics from plants. Surely the answer to all our problems. Well, maybe, but it's not quite that simple. 
Firstly, we need to get a few more things clear. Like, what are the full advantages of bio-based plastics? And what actually is the difference between bio-based and biodegradable? And is biodegradable always a good thing? And why can't we just recycle the plastics that we have and not bother me? much. Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Wait! This sounds familiar. Wait! This sounds familiar. Well, we've got our outtake, Will, so that's good.